Good afternoon, everyone. Today's Lichen Morpho group is the Frutico Scrubs. So what are some general features that unite the Frutico Scrubs? These are club and shrub-like white, gray, and greenish gray Fruticose lichens, excluding the Cladonias. We'll get to the Cladonias later when we uh, get to the clad group. These lichens have a white medulla, primarily green algae photobionts, sometimes with a cyanobacteria and external cephalodia. And I also want to mention that some of the descriptions that I use are from common macro lichens of the Pacific Northwest, McCune and Yang 2019. You can find it on this website here. Let's start with the Spheroforus. There's two species in this genus that I'd like to cover. Spheroforus venerabilis. This one forms erect tufts on bark and wood. It can be white, light gray, cream, or even take on an orangish tan color. The branches are gener generally roundish to irregular with a pitted texture. So if you look in this picture here, you can see it's kind of puckered and pitted in places. This feature is called foveolate. What's unique about this genus is the terminal spherical apothecia. It's actually a modified apothecia called a mazidium or mazidia plural. And you can see that picture down here on the bottom right. What's unique about this type of apothecia is that instead of the spores being ejected from their assay, um, they're actually going to be released through the slow um, disintegration of this outer structure, this outer circular structure, exposing the spores. Okay, so um, this is a pretty common lichen in moist uh, coniferous forests, and you'll often see it kind of covering the bark of large dug fir trees, for example, in an old growth forest or in an older forest. What's really cool is this uh, lichen has a UV positive uh, chemical in it. So if you take a UV lamp out at night and you shine it along the trees, it'll shine bright white. Spheroforus tuckermanii, another species in this genus, is similar in the features that I just described, but the branches are smoother overall. And it can also have a lot finer or cor coral-like branching pattern. So here you can see it again growing, and it still has some of these fat branches, but it has more of these tiny branches as well. And not so much of that pitting kind of texture on the branches. Okay, next in the scrubs, we have Pylophorus acicularis. This is devil's matchstick. As you can see, it looks quite like a matchstick here. Um, it's a thallus of gray stalks with black apothecia. The primary thallus, which is what's located on the actual, actual substrate, is a granular gray crust with external cephalodia. So you can't really make that out in this picture because this is growing out of a bed of liverworts and mosses. But if you were to dig down to the rock it's growing on, you might see that primary thallus. Now the primary photobiont is green and that's what you're seeing in the stalks here. This lichen will grow in partial shade and openings in low to middle elevation for, uh, moist forests and on rocky road cuts. It prefers non-calcareous rock and sometimes on wood. This is devil's matchstick. The next lichen I wanna show you is Avernia prunastri. This is a very ubiquitous lichen that grows in hardwood forests and low to middle elevations on trees in agricultural and urban areas. Here's a really great view um, of why I call this lichen fruticose folios. So technically it's fruticose, it can kind of shrub out and get a three dimensional shape. But sometimes when you're looking at an individual thalli, it clearly has a top and bottom. The top is clearly more green and the bottom is clearly more white. And it has this really distinct dichotomous branching pattern. It's quite beautiful. So you'll find this pretty commonly on hardwoods around the Olympia area. So look for it. And this has a green algae photobiont, Avernia prunastri. Next we have Ramelina farinacea. 
So this has a green algae photobion as well. Um, it can be confused with Avernia prunastri, but once you get up close, you'll quickly realize that this lichen has um, irregular, kind of irregularly shaped branches versus the very flattened branches of Avernia. And it also has ceridia in cerealia along the margins. So that's what these oval shaped structures are here. These are cerealia and the powdery granules inside of them are ceridia. Now, uh, Vernia rarely produces ceridia. Sometimes you'll see ceridia on it from other lichens that it's blown off of, um, but generally it's rather smooth comparatively. And this is also found in low to mid elevation forests on trees in agricultural and urban areas. So this is something that you might observe growing on the little maples in the parking lots around the Evergreen campus. Ah, the beautiful Ramelina menziesii. Here's one that's a delight to see in the field. It's a pendulous net forming lichen, um, almost like fishnets. It's lacking ceridian isidia. It does have elongate, weakly spiraling pseudocephalae. And this is a feature that you'll also observe on certain hair lichens. But essentially, as the lichen is growing, the cephalae elongate and stretch with the growing straps of lichen. This is most commonly found in the fog zone along the coast. Um, from, you know, I've seen it in Northern California, Oregon, and tiny parts of Washington on the coast can also be found in the Willamette Puget Trough along rivers and in forested wetlands, often thickly draping whole forests or individual trees. So absolutely gorgeous lichen, another green algae photobiont. Next we have Stereocolon. This is kind of an oddball. At first glance, you might think it's a cladonia, but when you really get up close, you see this odd, odd kind of tomentos decorticate branches with these strange kind of cauliflower-like growths on the tip. So stereocolon is interesting because it kind of has its own unique terminology that you know we'll get to know as we key it out. But I want you to be looking for these terms and starting to learn them. So the thallus has erect to prostrate stalk. So what that means is that it could be standing straight up like a cladonia stalk or it could be kind of laying down on its side like it's sleeping almost. And these stalks are not called podicia, they're called pseudopodicia in the case of stereocolon. And they're bearing projections on them, and that's these little kind of cauliflower like structures called phyllocladia. Now, the primary thallus has external ce cephalodia. So you will see cephalodia embedded along here. Um, when you look close. It's not in this picture. Um, it can also have apothecia, so that's confusing because you might see apothecia and cephalodia on it. This is a lichen that likes to grow on rock or hummus or soil over rock in moss mats. You'll often find it in cool rocky areas in the mountains such as talus slopes, outcrops, and lava flows. Truly a beautiful lichen, stereocolon, really difficult to identify, requires a lot of spot testing and learning of this different terminology. So we'll spend some time looking at these together in lab. All right, well, that's it for the Fruticose Scrubs. See you soon.